with you won in a landslide victory today. Um, how does it feel to have that outpouring of support? Oh, you know, it's a pretty amazing feeling, but it, you know what, Tony Mann uh, is, a, is a very viable candidate. Uh, had either one of us won, the riding would, would be in, in great shape. And I'm very proud of the representation that was here today. It was, it was not a great weather day, but people came out, they heard an important message, an up-deep message, a, a message about change, and we're here to make sure that this riding and rural ridings across New Brunswick get recognized. Obviously, you and Mr. Vickers are both very strong candidates for this upcoming either by-election or election. If both Liberal seats are, become Liberal seats, um, do you see yourself maybe going, taking the power from the Higgs government, if possible? Well, what we were uh, generally feeling right now is that uh, we, we had a series of elections in the province. Um, back in the provincial election, the federal election, we have municipal elections coming up. So uh, we'll just take this one step at a time. Obviously. Uh, premier Higgs is the premier of the province. It'll be his decision uh, when and wishes he call. Um, should he continue, or if he wishes to work in a collaborative, uh, cooperative manner with all members of the legislature, then I could see us uh, going for some time. But uh, if it's his way or the highway, then yes, I think we would be seeing an election. Yeah. Karen, um, what compelled you to get involved right away in in provincial politics? I can say it wasn't initially there, uh, but what the my tipping point was, you know, when people were asking me a lot to step up and step in and help them out on certain issues, but in particular, it was uh, when Premier Higgs talks about talked about centralizing the lab services, and literally in my purse, I have a requisition to go to the lab, and I was putting it off and putting it off, and I thought, geez, if I have a car and certainly can you know, manage myself to get to the Charlotte County Hospital for lab tests. If I had to consider, and I was delaying it, imagine if I had to think about going to St. John and how that would impact me. But for those that don't have a car and we don't have public transportation and the impact it would have on emergency services in, in Charlotte County and you know, for all of us that live here, whatever party you're involved in, you know, this is about rural New Brunswick and you know access to you know, quality health care has to be consistent and it, there has to be that confidence that it's going to be there for the long term just like our education system as a longtime educator when you look at consistent or the inconsistency and the changes that are being made right now in education that's hard to plan in and it's hard to look at five ten years out uh, in, in terms of curriculum or resources and, and trying to measure return on investment. And Mr. Vickers, why do you think um, Karen Ludwig will make such a strong person on your team going forward? It's a very easy question to answer. It's her values. Uh, when I first met Karen, what came shining through uh, was her respect for all people, her honesty, her integrity, her professionalism. And I know she, those values uh, she wears on the cuffs of her jacket and sleeve here, her blouse. And um, no, she's a remarkable person. She's passionate about this area. And I'm so excited to have her on our team. And I know that we're going to do a lot of great things together over the years for St. Croix. What was it about your years in public service that compelled you to come back to your home of New Brunswick at this point in your career? Well, for me, uh, you know, I see the province um, uh, economically. Uh, there's been no economic growth here and continually. We just saw the other day uh, Sapulto, the dairy in St. John closing, and this has been one after another uh, over the past uh, period of time. Um, and again, I'm fluently bilingual and uh, I, I know uh, from my past that I'm uh, going to be able to help make sure that our uh, both cultures, French and English, uh, are pulling together, working, working together and that we're a, a cohesive province uh, and we're just capable so much. And, but my number one reason, reason is, is to come back, is to transform the economy, to get the economy going for New Brunswick so our young people can stay here. Uh, we can have a responsible, sustainable environment is another big thing for me. And, you know, education and health uh, are always big, big issues as well. But if we have the economy going, then we'll have the money to look after the weak, the vulnerable, and the money that's required to sustain our health care and our, our education. Yeah. Um, Karen, today was just obviously a strong sign of the support you earned as our MP. How do you say your role changing, um, getting into provincial politics? What will you be representing differently or how will your job change? 
In some respects, there are issues that are closer to the ground. So when we look at health care and roads and education, um, those are issues that are near and dear to people. And, and often people don't see the distinction between federal and provincial politics. But I heard that loud and clear uh, for, the, for the last while with, with no representation. It, it's a hard one for people to look ahead and realize that there's a, such a level of uncertainty. So it's working with, with our next premier uh, and certainly working with, with all parties and the different levels of government, uh, and in particular the municipalities. They are the voices on the ground. It's not easy for a municipality to put together a, a funding application or for infrastructure. It's expensive, it takes resources, and then to present it to a provincial government that isn't listening. That you know, they're, they're using the auspice that they're balancing the books when there's critical infrastructure work that's not being done. And we, next, this spring, we could have another record flood along the St. John River, and there's been no work done in the past year. So I think it's looking ground level, literally ground level, um, and hitting the ground running as soon as possible. Um, what do you guys see as a positive to working in a minority government? Are there some things that could be beneficial in that case going forward? Well, you know, it, a minority government uh, is, a, is a government mandated by the people asking them, all parties to work together. And uh, we've not been seeing that so far. Um, I've been here as leader of the Liberal Party since April the 24th. I've never once received a phone call or an invitation to, to visit with the Premier to discuss, uh, discuss matters. So, um, yeah, a minority government really is all about uh, the people asking all parties to work together and uh, we've, we've just not been included in, or considered so far you know, as, as uh, this legislature has uh, transpired. Um, and finally, for people who don't understand um, the importance of this by-election, how do you explain that to voters when you're trying to get them out to this polls? This could be historic. Well, the, the uh, you know, the, it's just the, the matter of vote counts now and should uh, this uh, election is not should. When, when this uh, <laughs> riding uh, turns over, we'll have the majority of uh, seats in the in the legislature. Um, so that opens up uh, different possibilities. Uh, but, but again, um, I would encourage uh, Premier Higgs and the Conservative government uh, to work and hand out, reach out, and to uh, work uh, co cooperatively with all members, uh, all parties of the, of the of the legislature. Thank you both, and congratulations, Karen. A news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.